Brazil, officially the Federative Republic of Brazil, is the largest country in both South America and Latin America. At 8.5 million square kilometers, and with over 211 million people, Brazil is the world's fifth largest country by area and the sixth most populous. Its capital is Brasilia, and its most populous city is Sao Paulo. The federation is composed of the Union of the 26 States and the Federal District. It is the largest country to have Portuguese as an official language and the only one in the Americas, it is also one of the most multicultural and ethnically diverse nations, due to over a century of mass immigration from around the world, as well as the most populous Roman Catholic majority country. Bounded by the Atlantic Ocean on the east, Brazil has a coastline of 7,491 kilometers. It borders all other countries in South America except Ecuador and Chile and covers 47.3% of the continent's land area. Its Amazon basin includes a vast tropical forest, home to diverse wildlife, a variety of ecological systems, and extensive natural resources, spanning numerous protected habitats. This unique environmental heritage makes Brazil one of 17 megadiverse countries, and is the subject of significant global interest, as environmental degradation through processes like deforestation has direct impacts on global issues like climate change and biodiversity loss. Brazil was inhabited by numerous tribal nations prior to the landing in 1500 of explorer Pedro Alvarez Cabral, who claimed the area for the Portuguese Empire. Brazil remained a Portuguese colony until 1808, when the capital of the empire was transferred from Lisbon to Rio de Janeiro. In 1815, the colony was elevated to the rank of kingdom upon the formation of the United Kingdom of Portugal, Brazil and the Algarves. Independence was achieved in 1822 with the creation of the Empire of Brazil, a unitary state governed under a constitutional monarchy and a parliamentary system. The ratification of the first constitution in 1824 led to the formation of a bicameral legislature, now called the National Congress. The country became a presidential republic in 1889 following a military coup d'état. An authoritarian military junta came to power in 1964 and ruled until 1985, after which civilian governance resumed. Brazil's current constitution, formulated in 1988, defines it as a democratic federal republic. Due to its rich culture and history, the country ranks 13th in the world by number of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Brazil is a regional and middle power, and an emerging power. Brazil is classified as an upper-middle-income economy by the World Bank and a newly industrialized country, with the largest share of global wealth in South America. It is considered an advanced emerging economy, having the 12th largest GDP in the world by nominal, and 8th by PPP measures. It is one of the world's major breadbaskets, being the largest producer of coffee for the last 150 years. However, the country maintains high amounts of corruption, crime and social inequality. Brazil is a founding member of the United Nations, the G20, BRICS, Mercosul, Organization of American States, Organization of Ibero-American States and the Community of Portuguese Language Countries. Chapter 1 – Etymology The word Brazil likely comes from the Portuguese word for Brazilwood, a tree that once grew plentifully along the Brazilian coast. In Portuguese, Brazilwood is called Poor Brazil, with the word Brazil commonly given the etymology red like an ember, formed from brassa and the suffix eel. As Brazilwood produces a deep red dye, it was highly valued by the European textile industry, and was the earliest commercially exploited product from Brazil. Throughout the 16th century, Massive amounts of Brazil wood were harvested by indigenous peoples along the Brazilian coast, who sold the timber to European traders in return for assorted European consumer goods. The official Portuguese name of the land, in original Portuguese records, was the land of the Holy Cross, but European sailors and merchants commonly called it simply the land of Brazil because of the Brazil wood trade. The popular appellation eclipsed, and eventually supplanted the official Portuguese name. Some early sailors called it the land of parrots. In the Guarani language, an official language of Paraguay, 
Brazil is called Pindarama. This was the name the indigenous population gave to the region, meaning land of the palm trees. Chapter 2 History Chapter 2 Section 1 Pre Cabralin Era Some of the earliest human remains found in the Americas, Luzia Woman, were found in the area of Pedro Leopoldo, Minas Gerais, and provide evidence of human habitation going back at least 11,000 years. The earliest pottery ever found in the Western Hemisphere was excavated in the Amazon basin of Brazil and radiocarbon dated to 8,000 years ago. The pottery was found near Santarei and provides evidence that the tropical forest region supported a complex prehistoric culture. The Marioara culture flourished on Marijo in the Amazon Delta from 400 C to 1400 C, developing sophisticated pottery, social stratification, large populations, mound building, and complex social formations such as chiefdoms. Around the time of the Portuguese arrival, the territory of current day Brazil had an estimated indigenous population of 7 million people, mostly semi nomadic, who subsisted on hunting, fishing, gathering, and migrant agriculture. The indigenous population of Brazil comprised several large indigenous ethnic groups. The Tupi people were subdivided into the Tupiniquins and Tupinambas, and there were also many subdivisions of the other groups. Before the arrival of the Europeans, the boundaries between these groups and their subgroups were marked by wars that arose from differences in culture, language, and moral beliefs. These wars also involved large scale military actions on land and water with cannibalistic rituals on prisoners of war. While heredity had some weight, leadership status was more subdued over time, than allocated in succession ceremonies and conventions. Slavery among the Indians had a different meaning than it had for Europeans, since it originated from a diverse socio-economic organization, in which asymmetries were translated into kinship relations. Chapter 2 Section 2 Portuguese Colonization Following the 1494 Treaty of Tordesillas, the land now called Brazil was claimed for the Portuguese Empire on the 22nd of April 1500, with the arrival of the Portuguese fleet commanded by Pedro Alvarez Cabral. The Portuguese encountered indigenous peoples divided into several tribes, most of whom spoke languages of the Tupi Guarani family and fought among themselves. Though the first settlement was founded in 1532, Colonization effectively began in 1534, when King John III of Portugal divided the territory into the 15 private and autonomous captaincy colonies of Brazil. However, the decentralized and unorganized tendencies of the captaincy colonies proved problematic, and in 1549 the Portuguese king restructured them into the Governorate General of Brazil in the city of Salvador, which became the capital of a single and centralized Portuguese colony in South America. In the first two centuries of colonization, indigenous and European groups lived in constant war, establishing opportunistic alliances in order to gain advantages against each other. By the mid-16th century, cane sugar had become Brazil's most important export, while slaves purchased in sub-Saharan Africa in the slave market of Western Africa, had become its largest import, to cope with plantations of sugarcane, due to increasing international demand for Brazilian sugar. Portuguese Brazil received more than 2.8 million slaves from Africa between the years of 1500 to 1800. By the end of the 17th century, sugarcane exports began to decline and the discovery of gold by Bandeirantes in the 1690s would become the new backbone of the colony's economy, fostering a Brazilian gold rush which attracted thousands of new settlers to Brazil from Portugal and all Portuguese colonies around the world. This increased level of immigration in turn caused some conflicts between newcomers and old settlers. Portuguese expeditions known as Bonderos gradually advanced the Portugal colonial original frontiers in South America to approximately the current Brazilian borders. In this era, other European powers tried to colonize parts of Brazil, in incursions that the Portuguese had to fight, notably the French in Rio during the 1560s, in Maranao during the 1610s and the Dutch in Bahia and Pernambuco, during the Dutch-Portuguese War, 
after the end of Iberian Union. The Portuguese colonial administration in Brazil had two objectives that would ensure colonial order and the monopoly of Portugal's wealthiest and largest colony. To keep under control and eradicate all forms of slave rebellion and resistance, such as the Quilombo of Palmares, and to repress all movements for autonomy or independence, such as the Minas Conspiracy. Chapter 2 Section 3 United Kingdom with Portugal. In late 1807, Spanish and Napoleonic forces threatened the security of continental Portugal, causing Prince Regent João, in the name of Queen Maria I, to move the royal court from Lisbon to Rio de Janeiro. There they established some of Brazil's first financial institutions, such as its local stock exchanges and its national bank, additionally ending the Portuguese monopoly on Brazilian trade and opening Brazil to other nations. In 1809, in retaliation for being forced into exile, the Prince Regent ordered the Portuguese conquest of French Guiana. With the end of the Peninsular War in 1814, the courts of Europe demanded that Queen Maria I and Prince Regent Joao return to Portugal, deeming it unfit for the head of an ancient European monarchy to reside in a colony. In 1815, to justify continuing to live in Brazil, where the royal court had thrived for six years, the Crown established the United Kingdom of Portugal, Brazil and the Algarves, thus creating a pluricontinental transatlantic monarchic state. However, the leadership in Portugal, resentful of the new status of its larger colony, continued to demand the return of the court to Lisbon. In 1821, acceding to the demands of revolutionaries who had taken the city of Porto, de João Vai departed for Lisbon. There he swore an oath to the new constitution, leaving his son, Prince Pedro de Alcantara, as regent of the Kingdom of Brazil. Chapter 2 Section 4 Independent Empire Tensions between Portuguese and Brazilians increased and the Portuguese Cortes, guided by the new political regime imposed by the 1820 Liberal Revolution, tried to re-establish Brazil as a colony. The Brazilians refused to yield, and Prince Pedro decided to stand with them, declaring the country's independence from Portugal on 7 September 1822. A month later, Prince Pedro was declared the first emperor of Brazil, with the royal title of Dom Pedro I, resulting in the foundation of the Empire of Brazil. The Brazilian War of Independence, which had already begun along this process, spread through the northern, northeastern regions and in Cisplatina province. The last Portuguese soldiers surrendered on 8 March 1824, Portugal officially recognized Brazil on 29 August 1825. On 7 April 1831, worn down by years of administrative turmoil and political dissent with both liberal and conservative sides of politics, including an attempt of republican secession and unreconciled to the way that absolutists in Portugal had given in the succession of King John VI. Pedro I went to Portugal to reclaim his daughter's crown, abdicating the Brazilian throne in favor of his five-year-old son and heir. As the new emperor could not exert his constitutional powers until he came of age, a regency was set up by the National Assembly. In the absence of a charismatic figure who could represent a moderate face of power, during this period a series of localized rebellions took place, such as the Cabanagem in Grau Para province the male revolt in Salvador de Bahia, the Balada, the Sabinada, and the Ragamuffin War, which began in Rio Grande do Sul and was supported by Giuseppe Garibaldi. These emerged from the dissatisfaction of the provinces with the central power, coupled with old and latent social tensions peculiar to a vast, slaveholding and newly independent nation-state. This period of internal political and social upheaval, which included the Priera revolt in Pernambuco, was overcome only at the end of the 1840s, years after the end of the Regency, which occurred with the premature coronation of Pedro II in 1841. During the last phase of the monarchy, internal political debate centered on the issue of slavery. The Atlantic slave trade was abandoned in 1850, as a result of the British Aberdeen Act, but only in May 1888 after a long process of internal mobilization and debate for an ethical and legal dismantling of slavery in the country, was the institution formally abolished. The foreign affairs policies of the monarchy dealt with issues with the countries of the Southern Cone with whom Brazil had borders. 
Long after the Cisplatine War that resulted in independence for Uruguay, Brazil won three international wars during the 58-year reign of Pedro II. These were the Platina War, the Uruguayan War and the devastating Paraguayan War, the largest war effort in Brazilian history. Although there was no desire among the majority of Brazilians to change the country's form of government, on 15 November 1889, in disagreement with the majority of army officers, as well as with rural and financial elites, the monarchy was overthrown by a military coup. The 15th of November is now Republic Day, a national holiday. Chapter 2 Section 5, Early Republic The early republican government was nothing more than a military dictatorship, with army dominating affairs both in Rio de Janeiro and in the states. Freedom of the press disappeared and elections were controlled by those in power. Not until 1894, following an economic crisis and a military one, did civilians take power, remaining there until October 1930. If in relation to its foreign policy, the country in this first republican period maintained a relative balance characterized by a success in resolving border disputes with neighboring countries, only broken by the Acre War and its involvement in World War I, followed by a failed attempt to exert a prominent role in the League of Nations, internally. From the crisis of Insilimento and the Armada revolts, a prolonged cycle of financial, political and social instability began until the 1920s, keeping the country besieged by various rebellions, both civilian and military. Little by little, a cycle of general instability sparked by these crises undermined the regime to such an extent that in the wake of the murder of his running mate, the defeated opposition presidential candidate Getulio Vargas, supported by most of the military, successfully led the revolution of 1930. Vargas and the military were supposed to assume power temporarily, but instead closed down Congress, extinguished the Constitution, ruled with emergency powers and replaced the state's governors with his own supporters. In the 1930s, three failed attempts to remove Vargas and his supporters from power occurred. The first was the Constitutionalist Revolution in 1932, led by the Paulista oligarchy. The second was a communist uprising in November 1935, and the last one a putsch attempt by local fascists in May 1938. The 1935 uprising created a security crisis in which Congress transferred more power to the executive branch. The 1937 coup d'état resulted in the cancellation of the 1938 election, formalized Vargas as dictator, beginning the Estado Novo era, which was noted for government brutality and censorship of the press. Foreign policy during the Vargas years was marked by the World War II. Brazil remained neutral until August 1942, when the country entered on the Allied side, after suffering retaliation by Nazi Germany and fascist Italy, in a strategic dispute over the South Atlantic. In addition to its participation in the Battle of the Atlantic, Brazil also sent an expeditionary force to fight in the Italian campaign. With the Allied victory in 1945 and the end of the fascist regimes in Europe, Vargas's position became unsustainable and he was swiftly overthrown in another military coup, with democracy reinstated by the same army that had ended it 15 years earlier. Vargas committed suicide in August 1954 amid a political crisis, after having returned to power by election in 1950. Chapter 2 Section 6, Contemporary Era Several brief interim governments followed Vargas's suicide. Juscelino Kubitschek became president in 1956 and assumed a conciliatory posture towards the political opposition that allowed him to govern without major crises. The economy and industrial sector grew remarkably, but his greatest achievement was the construction of the new capital city of Brasilia, inaugurated in 1960. Kubitschek's successor, Janio Quadros, resigned in 1961 less than a year after taking office. His vice president, João Goulart, assumed the presidency, but aroused strong political opposition and was deposed in April 1964 by a coup that resulted in a military regime. The new regime was intended to be transitory but gradually closed in on itself and became a full dictatorship with the promulgation of the Fifth Institutional Act in 1968. Oppression was not limited to those who resorted to guerrilla tactics to fight the regime, but also reached institutional opponents, artists, 
journalists and other members of civil society, inside and outside the country through the infamous Operation Condor. Despite its brutality, like other authoritarian regimes, due to an economic boom, known as an economic miracle, the regime reached a peak in popularity in the early 1970s. Slowly, however, the wear and tear of years of dictatorial power that had not slowed the repression, even after the defeat of the leftist guerrillas, plus the inability to deal with the economic crises of the period and popular pressure, made an opening policy inevitable, which from the regime side was led by generals Ernesto Geisel and Golbery do Coto e Silva. With the enactment of the amnesty law in 1979, Brazil began a slow return to democracy, which was completed during the 1980s. Civilians returned to power in 1985 when José Sani assumed the presidency. He became unpopular during his tenure through failure to control the economic crisis and hyperinflation he inherited from the military regime. Sani's unsuccessful government led to the election in 1989 of the almost unknown Fernando Collor, subsequently impeached by the National Congress in 1992. Collor was succeeded by his vice president, Itamar Franco, who appointed Fernando Henrique Cardoso Minister of Finance. In 1994, Cardoso produced a highly successful Plano Real, that, after decades of failed economic plans made by previous governments attempting to curb hyperinflation, finally stabilized the Brazilian economy. Cardoso won the 1994 election, and again in 1998. The peaceful transition of power from Cardoso to his main opposition leader, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, was seen as proof that Brazil had achieved a long-sought political stability. However, sparked by indignation and frustrations accumulated over decades from corruption, police brutality, inefficiencies of the political establishment and public service, numerous peaceful protests erupted in Brazil from the middle of first term of Dilma Rousseff, who had succeeded Lula after winning election in 2010 and again in 2014 by narrow margins. Rousseff was impeached by the Brazilian Congress in 2016, halfway into her second term, and replaced by her vice president Michel Temer, who assumed full presidential powers after Rousseff's impeachment, was accepted on 31 August. Large street protests for and against her took place during the impeachment process. The charges against her were fueled by political and economic crises along with evidence of involvement with politicians in several bribery and tax evasion schemes. In 2017, the Supreme Court requested the investigation of 71 Brazilian lawmakers and nine ministers of President Michel Temer's cabinet who were allegedly linked to the Petrobras corruption scandal. President Temer himself was also accused of corruption. According to a 2018 poll, 62% of the population said that corruption was Brazil's biggest problem. Through the Operation Car Wash, the Federal Police of Brazil has since acted on the deviations and corruption of the PT and allied parties at that time. In the fiercely disputed 2018 elections, the controversial conservative candidate Jair Bolsonaro of the Social Liberal Party was elected president, winning in the second round Fernando Haddad, of the Workers' Party, with the support of 55.13% of the valid votes. In the early 2020s, Brazil became one of the hardest hit countries during the COVID 19 pandemic, receiving the second highest death toll worldwide after the United States. Experts have largely blamed the situation on the leadership of President Bolsonaro, who throughout the pandemic has repeatedly downplayed the threat of COVID-19 and dissuaded states and cities from enforcing quarantine measures, prioritizing the nation's economy. Chapter 3 – Geography Brazil occupies a large area along the eastern coast of South America, and includes much of the continent's interior, sharing land borders with Uruguay to the south, Argentina and Paraguay to the southwest, Bolivia and Peru to the west, Colombia to the northwest, and Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname and France to the north. It shares a border with every South American country except Ecuador and Chile. It also encompasses a number of oceanic archipelagos, such as Fernando de Noronha, Rocas Atoll, St. Peter, and Paul Rocks, and Trindade and Merchim Vaz. Its size, relief, climate, and natural resources make Brazil geographically diverse. Including its Atlantic islands, Brazil lies between latitudes 6 degrees north and 34 degrees south, 
and longitudes 28 degrees and 74 degrees west. Brazil is the fifth largest country in the world, and third largest in the Americas, with a total area of 8,515,767.049 square kilometers, including 55,455 square kilometers of water. It spans four time zones from UK-5 comprising the state of Acre and the westernmost portion of Amazonas, to UK-4 in the western states, to UK-3 in the eastern states and UK-2 in the Atlantic Islands. Brazil is the longest country in the world, spanning 4,395 kilometers from north to south. Brazil is also the only country in the world that has the equator and the Tropic of Capricorn running through it. Brazilian topography is also diverse and includes hills, mountains, plains, highlands, and scrublands. Much of the terrain lies between 200 meters and 800 meters in elevation. The main upland area occupies most of the southern half of the country. The northwestern parts of the plateau consist of broad, rolling terrain broken by low, rounded hills. The southeastern section is more rugged, with a complex mass of ridges and mountain ranges reaching elevations of up to 1,200 meters. These ranges include the Monte Cara and Espinaco Mountains, and the Serra do March in the north, the Guiana Highlands form a major drainage divide, separating rivers that flow south into the Amazon Basin from rivers that empty into the Orinoco River system, in Venezuela, to the north. The highest point in Brazil is the Pico de Neblina at 2,994 meters, and the lowest is the Atlantic Ocean. Brazil has a dense and complex system of rivers, one of the world's most extensive, with eight major drainage basins, all of which drain into the Atlantic. Major rivers include the Amazon, the Paraná and its major tributary the Agassu, the Negro, São Francisco, Jingyu, Madeira and Topajós rivers. Chapter 3 Section 1 – Climate The climate of Brazil comprises a wide range of weather conditions across a large area and varied topography, but most of the country is tropical. According to the Kirpin system, Brazil hosts six major climatic subtypes, desert, equatorial, tropical, semi-arid, oceanic and subtropical. The different climatic conditions produce environments ranging from equatorial rainforests in the north and semi-arid deserts in the northeast, to temperate coniferous forests in the south and tropical savannas in central Brazil. Many regions have starkly different microclimates. An equatorial climate characterizes much of northern Brazil. There is no real dry season, but there are some variations in the period of the year when most rain falls. Temperatures average 25 degrees Celsius, with more significant temperature variation between night and day than between seasons. Over central Brazil, rainfall is more seasonal, characteristic of a savanna climate. This region is as extensive as the Amazon basin, but has a very different climate, as it lies farther south at a higher altitude. In the interior northeast, Seasonal rainfall is even more extreme. The semi arid climatic region generally receives less than 800 mm of rain, most of which generally falls in a period of three to five months of the year and occasionally less than this, creating long periods of drought. Brazil's 1877 78 Grand Seeker, the worst in Brazil's history, caused approximately half a million deaths. A similarly devastating drought occurred in 1915. South of Bahia, near the coasts, and more southerly, most of the state of Sao Paulo, the distribution of rainfall changes, with rain falling throughout the year. The south enjoys subtropical conditions, with cool winters and average annual temperatures not exceeding 18 degrees Celsius, winter frosts and snowfall are not rare in the highest areas. Chapter 3, Section 2 biodiversity and environment. Brazil's large territory comprises different ecosystems, such as the Amazon rainforest, recognized as having the greatest biological diversity in the world, with the Atlantic forest and the Cerrado, sustaining the greatest biodiversity. In the south, the Araucaria pine forest grows under temperate conditions. The rich wildlife of Brazil reflects the variety of natural habitats. 
Scientists estimate that the total number of plant and animal species in Brazil could approach 4 million, mostly invertebrates. Larger mammals include carnivores, pumas, jaguars, ocelots, rare bush dogs and foxes, and herbivores, peccaries, tapirs, anteaters, sloths, opossums, and armadillos. Deer are plentiful in the south, and many species of New World monkeys are found in the northern rain forests. Concern for the environment has grown in response to global interest in environmental issues. Brazil's Amazon basin is home to an extremely diverse array of fish species, including the red-bellied piranha. By 2013, Brazil's dramatic policy-driven reduction in Amazon basin deforestation was a global exception in terms of forest change, according to scientific journal Science, 852 from 2003 to 2011, compared to all other countries in the world, Brazil had the largest decline in annual forest loss, as indicated in the study using high-resolution satellite maps showing global forest cover changes, 850. The annual loss of forest cover decreased from a 2003 to 2004 record high of more than 40,000 square kilometers to a 2010 to 2011 low of under 20,000 square kilometers, 850 reversing widespread deforestation, 852 from the 1970s to 2003s. In 2017, preserved native vegetation occupies 61% of the Brazilian territory. Agriculture occupied only 8% of the national territory and pastures 19.7%. In terms of comparison, in 2019, although 43% of the entire European continent has forests, only 3% of the total forest area in Europe is of native forest. In 2020, the government of Brazil pledged to reduce its annual greenhouse gases emissions by 43% by 2030. It also set as indicative target of reaching carbon neutrality by the year 2060 if the country gets $10 billion per year. Chapter 4, Government and Politics The form of government is a democratic federative republic, with a presidential system. The president is both head of state and head of government of the union and is elected for a four-year term, with the possibility of re-election for a second successive term. The current president is Jair Bolsonaro. The previous president, Michel Temer, replaced Dilma Rousseff after her impeachment. The president appoints the ministers of state, who assist in government. Legislative houses in each political entity are the main source of law in Brazil. The National Congress is the federation's bicameral legislature, consisting of the Chamber of Deputies and the Federal Senate. Judiciary authorities exercise jurisdictional duties almost exclusively. Brazil is a democracy, according to the Democracy Index 2010. The political administrative organization of the Federative Republic of Brazil comprises the Union, the States, the Federal District, and the Municipalities. The Union, the States, the Federal District, and the Municipalities, are the spheres of government. The Federation is set on five fundamental principles, sovereignty, citizenship, dignity of human beings, the social values of labor and freedom of enterprise, and political pluralism. The classic tripartite branches of government are formally established by the Constitution. The executive and legislative are organized independently in all three spheres of government, while the judiciary is organized only at the federal and state and federal district spheres. All members of the executive and legislative branches are directly elected. Judges and other judicial officials are appointed after passing entry exams. For most of its democratic history, Brazil has had a multi-party system, proportional representation. Voting is compulsory for the literate between 18 and 70 years old and optional for illiterates and those between 16 and 18 or beyond 70. The country has more than 40 active political parties. Together with several smaller parties, four political parties stand out, Workers' Party, Brazilian Social Democracy Party, Brazilian Democratic Movement and Democrats. Fifteen political parties are represented in Congress. It is common for politicians to switch parties, and thus the proportion of congressional seats held by particular parties changes regularly. 
Almost all governmental and administrative functions are exercised by authorities and agencies affiliated to the executive. Chapter 4 Section 1 Law Brazilian law is based on the civil law legal system and civil law concepts prevail over common law practice. Most of Brazilian law is codified, although non-codified statutes also represent a substantial part, playing a complementary role. Court decisions set out interpretive guidelines, however, they are seldom binding on other specific cases. Doctrinal works and the works of academic jurists have strong influence in law creation and in law cases. The legal system is based on the federal constitution, promulgated on 5 October 1988, and the fundamental law of Brazil. All other legislation and court decisions must conform to its rules. As of April 2007, there have been 53 amendments. States have their own constitutions, which must not contradict the federal constitution. Municipalities and the federal district have organic laws, which act in a similar way to constitutions. Legislative entities are the main source of statutes, although in certain matters judiciary and executive bodies may enact legal norms. Jurisdiction is administered by the judiciary entities, although in rare situations the federal constitution allows the federal senate to pass on legal judgments. There are also specialized military, labor, and electoral courts. The highest court is the Supreme Federal Court. This system, has been criticized over the last few decades for the slow pace of decision-making. Lawsuits on appeal may take several years to resolve, and in some cases more than a decade elapses before definitive rulings. Nevertheless, the Supreme Federal Tribunal was the first court in the world to transmit its sessions on television, and also via YouTube. In December 2009, the Supreme Court adopted Twitter to display items on the day planner of the ministers, to inform the daily actions of the court and the most important decisions made by them. Chapter 4 Section 2 – Military the armed forces of Brazil are the largest in Latin America by active personnel and the largest in terms of military equipment. The country was considered the ninth largest military power on the planet in 2021. It consists of the Brazilian Army, the Brazilian Navy, and the Brazilian Air Force. Brazil's conscription policy gives it one of the world's largest military forces, estimated at more than 1.6 million reservists annually. Numbering close to 236,000 active personnel, the Brazilian Army has the largest number of armored vehicles in South America, including armored transports and tanks. It is also unique in Latin America for its large, elite forces specializing in unconventional missions, the Brazilian Special Operations Command, and the versatile Strategic Rapid Action Force, made up of highly mobilized and prepared Special Operations Brigade, Infantry Brigade Parachutist, 1st Jungle Infantry Battalion and 12th Brigade Light Infantry able to act anywhere in the country, on short notice, to counter external aggression. The state's military police and the military firefighters corps are described as an ancillary forces of the army by the constitution, but are under the control of each state's governor. Brazil's navy, the second largest in the Americas, once operated some of the most powerful warships in the world with the two Minas Gerais class dreadnoughts, which sparked a South American dreadnought race between Argentina, Brazil, and Chile. Today, it is a green water force and has a group of specialized elite in retaking ships and naval facilities, RUMEC, units specially trained to protect Brazilian oil platforms along its coast. It is the only navy in Latin America that operates an aircraft carrier, PHM Atlantico, and one of the ten navies of the world to operate one. The Air Force is the largest in Latin America, and has about 700 crewed aircraft in service and effective about 67,000 personnel. Brazil has not been invaded since 1865 during the Paraguayan War. Additionally, Brazil has no contested territorial disputes with any of its neighbors and neither does it have rivalries, like Chile and Bolivia have with each other. The Brazilian military has also three times intervened militarily to overthrow the Brazilian government. It has built a tradition of participating in UN peacekeeping missions such as in Haiti, East Timor, and Central African Republic. 
Brazil signed the UN Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Chapter 4 Section 3, Foreign Policy Brazil's international relations are based on Article 4 of the Federal Constitution, which establishes non-intervention, self-determination, international cooperation, and the peaceful settlement of conflicts as the guiding principles of Brazil's relationship with other countries and multilateral organizations. According to the Constitution, the President has ultimate authority over foreign policy, while the Congress is tasked with reviewing and considering all diplomatic nominations and international treaties, as well as legislation relating to Brazilian foreign policy. Brazil's foreign policy is a byproduct of the country's position as a regional power in Latin America, a leader among developing countries, and an emerging world power. Brazilian foreign policy has generally been based on the principles of multilateralism, peaceful dispute settlement, and non-intervention in the affairs of other countries. Brazil is a founding member state of the Community of Portuguese Language Countries, also known as the Lusophone Commonwealth, an international organization and political association of Lusophone nations across four continents, where Portuguese is an official language. An increasingly well-developed tool of Brazil's foreign policy is providing aid as a donor to other developing countries. Brazil does not just use its growing economic strength to provide financial aid, but it also provides high levels of expertise and most importantly of all, a quiet non-confrontational diplomacy to improve governance levels. Total aid is estimated to be around $1 billion per year, which includes. In addition, Brazil already managed a peacekeeping mission in Haiti and makes in-kind contributions to the World Food Programme. This is in addition to humanitarian assistance and contributions to multilateral development agencies. The scale of this aid places it on par with China and India. The Brazilian South-South aid has been described as a global model in waiting. Chapter 4 Section 4, Law Enforcement and Crime In Brazil, the Constitution establishes five different police agencies for law enforcement, Federal Police Department, Federal Highway Police, Federal Railroad Police, Military Police, and Civil Police. Of these, the first three are affiliated with federal authorities and the last two are subordinate to state governments. All police forces are the responsibility of the executive branch of any of the federal or state powers. The National Public Security Force also can act in public disorder situations arising anywhere in the country. The country still has above average levels of violent crime and particularly high levels of gun violence and homicide. In 2012, the World Health Organization estimated the number of 32 deaths per 100,000 inhabitants, one of the highest rates of homicide of the world. The number considered tolerable by the WHO is about 10 homicides per 100,000 inhabitants. In 2018, Brazil had a record 63,880 murders. However, there are differences between the crime rates in the Brazilian states. While in Sao Paulo the homicide rate registered in 2013 was 10.8 deaths per 100,000 inhabitants, in Alagoas it was 64.7 homicides per 100,000 inhabitants. Brazil also has high levels of incarceration and the third largest prison population in the world, with an estimated total of approximately 700,000 prisoners around the country, an increase of about 300% compared to the index registered in 1992. The high number of prisoners eventually overloaded the Brazilian prison system, leading to a shortfall of about 200,000 accommodations. Chapter 4 Section 5, Administrative Divisions Brazil is a federation composed of 26 states, one federal district, and the 5,570 municipalities. States have autonomous administrations, collect their own taxes and receive a share of taxes collected by the federal government. They have a governor and a unicameral legislative body elected directly by their voters. They also have independent courts of law for common justice. Despite this, states have much less autonomy to create their own laws than in the United States. For example, criminal and civil laws can be voted by only the federal bicameral Congress and are uniform throughout the country. The states and the federal district may be grouped into regions, northern, 
northeast, central west, southeast, and southern. The Brazilian regions are merely geographical, not political or administrative divisions, and they do not have any specific form of government. Although defined by law, Brazilian regions are useful mainly for statistical purposes, and also to define the distribution of federal funds in development projects. Municipalities, as the states, have autonomous administrations, collect their own taxes and receive a share of taxes collected by the union and state government. Each has a mayor and an elected legislative body, but no separate court of law. Indeed, a court of law organized by the state can encompass many municipalities in a single justice administrative division called Comarca. Chapter 5, Economy Brazil is the largest national economy in Latin America, the world's ninth largest economy and the eighth largest in purchasing power parity according to 2018 estimates. Brazil has a mixed economy with abundant natural resources. After rapid growth in preceding decades, the country entered an ongoing recession in 2014 amid a political corruption scandal and nationwide protests. Its gross domestic product per capita was $15,919 in 2017 putting Brazil in the 77th position according to IMF data. Active in agricultural, mining, manufacturing and service sectors Brazil has a labor force of over 107 million, and unemployment of 6.2%. The country has been expanding its presence in international financial and commodities markets, and is one of a group of four emerging economies called the BRIC countries. Brazil has been the world's largest producer of coffee for the last 150 years. The country is a major exporter of soy, iron ore, pulp, maize, beef, chicken meat, soybean meal, sugar, coffee, tobacco, cotton, orange juice, footwear, airplanes, cars, vehicle parts, gold, ethanol, semi-finished iron, among other products. Brazil's diversified economy includes agriculture, industry, and a wide range of services. Agriculture and allied sectors like forestry, logging and fishing accounted for 5.1% of the GDP in 2007. Brazil is the largest producer of various agricultural commodities. And also has a large cooperative sector that provides 50% of the food in the country. The world's largest healthcare cooperative Unimed is also located in Brazil, and accounts for 32% of the healthcare insurance market in the country. Brazil is one of the largest producers of animal proteins in the world. In 2019, the country was the world's largest exporter of chicken meat. It was also the world's second largest producer of beef, third largest producer of milk, fourth largest producer of pork and seventh largest producer of eggs. In the mining sector, Brazil stands out in the extraction of iron ore, copper, gold, bauxite, manganese, tin, niobium and nickel. In terms of precious stones, Brazil is the world's largest producer of amethyst, topaz, agate and one of the main producers of tourmaline, emerald, aquamarine and garnet. Industry in Brazil, from automobiles, steel and petrochemicals to computers, aircraft and consumer durables, accounted for 30.8% of the gross domestic product. Industry is highly concentrated in metropolitan Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, Campinas, Porto Alegre, and Belo Horizonte. Brazil has become the fourth largest car market in the world. Major export products include aircraft, electrical equipment, automobiles, ethanol, textiles, footwear, iron ore, steel, coffee, orange juice, soybeans and corned beef. In total, Brazil ranks 23rd worldwide in value of exports. In the food industry, in 2019, Brazil was the second largest exporter of processed foods in the world. In 2016, the country was the second largest producer of pulp in the world, and the eighth producer of paper. In the footwear industry, in 2019, Brazil ranked fourth among world producers. In 2019, the country was the eighth producer of vehicles and the ninth producer of steel in the world. In 2018, the chemical industry of Brazil was the eighth in the world. 
Although it was among the five largest world producers in 2013, Brazil's textile industry is very little integrated into world trade. The tertiary sector represented 75.8% of the country's GDP in 2018, according to the IBIJ. The service sector was responsible for 60% of GDP and trade for 13%. It covers a wide range of activities commerce, accommodation and catering, transport, communications, financial services, real estate activities and services provided to businesses, public administration and other services such as education, social and health services, research and development, sports activities, etc., since it consists of activities complementary to other sectors. Micro and small businesses represent 30% of the country's GDP. In the commercial sector, for example, they represent 53% of the GDP within the activities of the sector. Brazil pegged its currency, the real, to the US dollar in 1994. However, after the East Asian financial crisis, the Russian default in 1998, and the series of adverse financial events that followed it, the Central Bank of Brazil temporarily changed its monetary policy to a managed float regime scheme while undergoing a currency crisis until definitively changing the exchange regime to free float in January 1999. Brazil received an International Monetary Fund rescue package in mid-2002 of $30.4 billion, a record sum at the time. Brazil's central bank repaid the IMF loan in 2005, although it was not due to be repaid until 2006. One of the issues the Central Bank of Brazil recently dealt with was an excess of speculative short-term capital inflows to the country, which may have contributed to a fall in the value of the US dollar against the real during that period. Nonetheless, foreign direct investment, related to long-term, less speculative investment in production, is estimated to be $193.8 billion for 2007. Inflation monitoring and control currently plays a major part in the central bank's role in setting short-term interest rates as a monetary policy measure. Corruption costs Brazil almost $41 billion a year alone in 2010, with 69.9% of the country's firms identifying the issue as a major constraint in successfully penetrating the global market. Local government corruption is so prevalent that voters perceive it as a problem only if it surpasses certain levels, and only if a local media for example a radio station is present to divulge the findings of corruption charges. Initiatives, like this exposure, strengthen awareness which is indicated by the Transparency International's Corruption Perceptions Index, ranking Brazil 69th out of 178 countries in 2012. The purchasing power in Brazil is eroded by the so-called Brazil cost. Chapter 5 Section 1, N Energy Brazil is the world's 10th largest energy consumer with much of its energy coming from renewable sources, particularly hydroelectricity and ethanol. The Itaipu Dam is the world's largest hydroelectric plant by energy generation, and the country has other large plants like Belo Monte and Tucuí. The first car with an ethanol engine was produced in 1978, and the first airplane engine running on ethanol in 2005. In total electricity generation, in 2019 Brazil reached 170,000 megawatts of installed capacity, more than 75% from renewable sources. In 2019, Brazil had 217 hydroelectric plants in operation, with an installed capacity of 98,581 megawatts, 60.16% of the country's energy generation. Brazil is one of the five largest hydroelectric energy producers in the world. As of November 2021, according to ONS, total installed capacity of wind power was 20 gigawatts, with average capacity factor of 58%. While the world average wind production capacity factors is 24.7%, there are areas in northern Brazil, especially in Bahia State, where some wind farms record with average capacity factors over 60%, the average capacity factor in the northeast region is 45% in the coast and 49% in the interior. In 2019, wind energy represented 9% of the energy generated in the country. In 2019, it was estimated that the country had an estimated wind power generation potential of around 522 gigawatts, 
enough energy to meet three times the country's current demand. Brazil is one of the ten largest wind energy producers in the world. As of November 2021, according to ONS, total installed capacity of photovoltaic solar was 11.3 gigawatts, with average capacity factor of 23%. Some of the most irradiated Brazilian states are Minas Gerais, Bahia, and Goiás. In 2019, Solar power represented 1.27% of the energy generated in the country. In 2020, Brazil was the 14th country in the world in terms of installed solar power. In 2020, Brazil was the second largest country in the world in the production of energy through biomass, with 15, 2 gigawatts installed. Dot recent oil discoveries in the pre-salt layer have opened the door for a large increase in oil production. The governmental agencies responsible for the energy policy are the Ministry of Mines and Energy, the National Council for Energy Policy, the National Agency of Petroleum, Natural Gas, and Biofuels, and the National Agency of Electricity. In the beginning of 2020, in the production of oil and natural gas, the country exceeded 4 million barrels of oil equivalent per day, for the first time. In January this year, 3.168 3.168 million barrels of oil per day and 138.753 million cubic meters of natural gas were extracted. Chapter 5 Section 2 Tourism Tourism in Brazil is a growing sector and key to the economy of several regions of the country. The country had 6.36 million visitors in 2015, ranking in terms of the international tourist arrivals as the main destination in South America, and second in Latin America after Mexico. Revenues from international tourists reached US$6 billion in 2010, showing a recovery from the 2008-2009 economic crisis. Historical records of 5.4 million visitors and US$6.8 billion in receipts were reached in 2011. In the list of world tourist destinations, in 2018, Brazil was the 48th most visited country, with 6.6 million tourists. Natural areas are its most popular tourism product, a combination of ecotourism with leisure and recreation, mainly sun and beach, and adventure travel, as well as cultural tourism. Among the most popular destinations are the Amazon rainforest, beaches and dunes in the northeast region, the Pantanal in the center-west region, beaches at Rio de Janeiro and Santa Catarina, cultural tourism in Minas Gerais and business trips to Sao Paulo. In terms of the 2015 Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Index, which is a measurement of the factors that make it attractive to develop business in the travel and tourism industry of individual countries, Brazil ranked in the 28 SD place at the world's level, third in the Americas, after Canada and United States. Brazil's main competitive advantages are its natural resources, which ranked first on this criteria out of all countries considered, and ranked 23rd for its cultural resources, due to its many world heritage sites. The TTCI report notes Brazil's main weaknesses, its ground transport infrastructure remains underdeveloped, with the quality of roads ranking in 105th place, and the country continues to suffer from a lack of price competitiveness, due in part to high-ticket taxes and airport charges, as well as high prices and high taxation. Safety and security have improved significantly, 75th in 2011, up from 128th in 2008. Chapter 5 Section 3 Creative Economy The first study into the impact of the creative industries on the Brazilian economy was published by Fergin. The creative economy in Latin America was termed the Orange Economy in a publication released by the Inter-American Development Bank. This 2013 study valued Brazil's orange economy at used 66,87 billion providing 5,280,000 jobs and responsible for 9,414 million US dollars in exports, with the value of creative exports being higher than coffee exports over the same period. A 2021 study into the intellectual property intensive sectors in the Brazilian economy was undertaken as part of the National Strategy on Intellectual Property 2021-2030. 
The study found that 450 of Brazil's 673 economic classes could be classified as IP-intensive sectors which collectively employed 19,3 million people. The share of GDP between 2014 and 2016 across these economic classes amounted to BRL 2,1 trillion quiais or 44,2% of GDP. Chapter 6, Infrastructure Chapter 6, Section 1, Science and Technology Technological research in Brazil is largely carried out in public universities and research institutes with the majority of funding for basic research coming from various government agencies. Brazil's most esteemed technological hubs are the Asfaldo Cruz Institute, the Butantan Institute, the Air Force's Aerospace Technical Center, the Brazilian Agricultural Research Corporation and the National Institute for Space Research. The Brazilian Space Agency has the most advanced space program in Latin America, with significant resources to launch vehicles, and manufacture of satellites. Owner of relative technological sophistication, the country develops submarines, aircraft, as well as being involved in space research, having a vehicle launch center light and being the only country in the southern hemisphere the integrate team building International Space Station. The country is also a pioneer in the search for oil in deep water, from where it extracts 73% of its reserves. Uranium is enriched at the Hizangi nuclear fuel factory, mostly for research purposes and the country's first nuclear submarine, was delivered in 2015. Brazil is one of the three countries in Latin America with an operational synchrotron laboratory, a research facility on physics, chemistry, material science and life sciences, and Brazil is the only Latin American country to have a semiconductor company with its own fabrication plant, the CTEC. According to the Global Information Technology Report 2009-2010 of the World Economic Forum, Brazil is the world's 61st largest developer of information technology. Brazil was ranked 62nd in the Global Innovation Index in 2020, up from 66th in 2019. Among the most renowned Brazilian inventors are priests Bartolomeu de Guzmão, Landel de Moura and Francisco João de Azevedo, besides Alberto Santos Dumont, Evaristo Conrado Engelberg, Manuel Dias do Abreu, Andreas Pavel, and Nelio José Nicolai. Brazilian science is represented by the likes of Cesar Lattes, Mari Oceanberg, José Leite Lopes, Arto Avila and Fritz Muller. Chapter 6, Section 2, Transport Brazilian roads are the primary carriers of freight and passenger traffic. The road system totaled 1,720,000 km in 2019. The total of paved roads increased from 35,496 km in 1967 to 215,000 km in 2018. The country has about 14,000 km of divided highways, 5,000 km only in the state of Sao Paulo. Currently it's possible to travel from Rio Grande, in the extreme south of the country, to Brasilia, or Cosimiro do Abreu, in the state of Rio de Janeiro, only on divided highways. The first investments in road infrastructure have given up in the 1920s, the government of Washington Luis, being pursued in the governments of Getulio Vargas and Eurico Gaspar Dutra. President Juscelino Kubitschek, who designed and built the capital Brasilia, was another supporter of highways. Brazil's railway system, has been declining since 1945, when emphasis shifted to highway construction. The total length of railway track was 30,875 km in 2002, as compared with 31,848 km in 1970. Most of the railway system belonged to the Federal Railroad Corporation FSA, which was privatized in 2007. The Sao Paulo Metro was the first underground transit system in Brazil. The other metro systems are in Rio de Janeiro, Porto Alegre, Recife, Belo Horizonte, Brasilia, Salvador, and Fortaleza. The country has an extensive rail network of 28,538 km in length, the 10th largest network in the world. Currently, the Brazilian government, unlike the past, seeks to encourage this mode of transport, 
An example of this incentive is the project of the Rio Sao Paulo high-speed rail, that will connect the two main cities of the country to carry passengers. There are about 2,500 airports in Brazil, including landing fields, the second largest number in the world, after the United States. Sao Paulo Guarulhos International Airport, near Sao Paulo, is the largest and busiest airport with nearly 20 million passengers annually, while handling the vast majority of commercial traffic for the country. For freight transport waterways are of importance, for example the industrial zones of Manaus can be reached only by means of the Solomois Amazonas waterway. The country also has 50,000 kilometers of waterways. Coastal shipping links widely separated parts of the country. Bolivia and Paraguay have been given free ports at Santos. Of the 36 deep water ports, Santos, Itajai, Rio Grande, Panagua, Rio de Janeiro, Sepetiba, Vitoria, Swape, Manaus and São Francisco do Sal are the most important. Bulk carriers have to wait up to 18 days before being serviced, container ships 36.3 hours on average. Chapter 6, Section 3, Health The Brazilian public health system, the unified health system, is managed and provided by all levels of government, being the largest system of this type in the world. On the other hand, private health care systems play a complementary role. Public health services are universal and offered to all citizens of the country for free. However, the construction and maintenance of health centers and hospitals are financed by taxes, and the country spends about 9% of its GDP on expenditures in the area. In 2012, Brazil had 1.85 doctors and 2.3 hospital beds for every 1,000 inhabitants. Despite all the progress made, since the creation of the universal health care system in 1988, there are still several public health problems in Brazil. In 2006, the main points to be solved were the high infant and maternal mortality rates. The number of deaths from non-communicable diseases, such as cardiovascular diseases and cancer, also has a considerable impact on the health of the Brazilian population. Finally, external but preventable factors such as car accidents, violence and suicide caused 14.9% of all deaths in the country. The Brazilian health system, was ranked 125th among the 191 countries evaluated by the World Health Organization in 2000. Chapter 6, Section 4, Education The federal constitution, and the law of guidelines and bases of national education determine that the union, the states, the federal district, and the municipalities must manage and organize their respective education systems. Each of these public educational systems is responsible for its own maintenance, which manages funds as well as the mechanisms and funding sources. The Constitution reserves 25% of the state budget and 18% of federal taxes and municipal taxes for education. According to the IBIJ, in 2019, the literacy rate of the population was 93.4%, meaning that 11.3 million people are still illiterate in the country, with some states like Rio de Janeiro, and Santa Catarina reaching around 97% of literacy rate, functional illiteracy has reached, 21.6% of the population. Illiteracy is higher in the northeast, where 13.87% of the population is illiterate, while the south, has 3.3% of its population illiterate. Brazil's private institutions tend to be more exclusive and offer better quality education, so many high income families send their children there. The result is a segregated educational system that reflects extreme income disparities and reinforces social inequality. However, efforts to change this are making impacts. The University of Sao Paulo is the second best university in Latin America according to recent 2019 Q's World University Rankings. Of the top 20 Latin American universities, 8 are Brazilian. Most of them are public. Attending an institution of higher education is required by law of guidelines and bases of education. Kindergarten, elementary and medium education are required of all students. Chapter 6, Section 5 media and communication. 
The Brazilian press was officially born in Rio de Janeiro on 13 May 1808 with the creation of the Royal Printing National Press by the Prince Regent Dom João dot the Gazeta do Rio de Janeiro, the first newspaper published in the country, began to circulate on 10 September 1808. The largest newspapers nowadays are Folha de S. Paulo, Super Noticia, O Globo and O Estado de S. Paulo. Radio broadcasting began on 7 September 1922, with a speech by then President Pessoa, and was formalized on 20 April 1923 with the creation of Radio Society of Rio de Janeiro. Television in Brazil began officially on 18 September 1950, with the founding of TV Tupi by Assis Chateaubriand. Since then television has grown in the country, creating large commercial broadcast networks such as Globo, SBT, Record TV, Bandeirantes and Reed TV. Today, it is the most important factor in popular culture of Brazilian society, indicated by research showing that as much as 67% of the general population follow the same daily soap opera broadcast. Digital television, using the SBTVD standard, was adopted on 29 June 2006 and launched on 2 November 2007. In May 2010, the Brazilian government launched TV Brazil International, an international television station, initially broadcasting to 49 countries. Commercial television channels broadcast internationally include Globo International, Record TV International and Band International. Chapter 7 Demographics. The population of Brazil, as recorded by the 2008 NAD, was approximately 190 million, with a ratio of men to women of 0.95 to 1 and 83.75% of the population defined as urban. The population is heavily concentrated in the southeastern and northeastern regions, while the two most extensive regions, the center west and the north, which together make up 64.12% of the Brazilian territory, have a total of only 29.1 million inhabitants. The first census in Brazil was carried out in 1872 and recorded a population of 9,930,478. From 1880 to 1930, 4 million Europeans arrived. Brazil's population increased significantly between 1940 and 1970, because of a decline in the mortality rate, even though the birth rate underwent a slight decline. In the 1940s the annual population growth rate was 2.4%, rising to 3.0% in the 1950s and remaining at 2.9% in the 1960s, as life expectancy rose from 44 to 54 years, and to 72.6 years in 2007. It has been steadily falling since the 1960s, from 3.04% per year between 1950 and 1960 to 1.05% in 2008, and is expected to fall to a negative value of minus 0.29% by 2050 thus completing the demographic transition. In 2008, the illiteracy rate was 11.48% and among the youth 1.74%. It was highest in the northeast, which had a large proportion of rural poor. Illiteracy was high among the rural population and lower among the urban population. Chapter 7 Section 1 – Race and Ethnicity According to the National Research by Household Sample of 2008, 48.43% of the population described themselves as white, 43.80% as pardo, 6.84% as black, 0.58% as East Asian, and 0.28% as Amerindian, while 0.07% did not declare their race. In 2007, the National Indian Foundation estimated that Brazil has 67 different uncontacted tribes, up from their estimate of 40 in 2005. Brazil is believed to have the largest number of uncontacted peoples in the world. Since the arrival of the Portuguese in 1500, considerable genetic mixing between Amerindians, Europeans, and Africans has taken place in all regions of the country. Brazilian society is more markedly divided by social class lines, although a high income disparity is found between race groups, so racism and classism often overlap. 
Socially significant closeness to one racial group is taken in account more in the basis of appearance rather than ancestry, to the extent that full siblings can pertain to different racial groups. Socioeconomic factors are also significant, because a minority of pardos are likely to start declaring themselves white or black if socially upward. Skin color and facial features do not line quite well with ancestry. The brown population is a broad category that includes carboclos, mulattoes and cafuzos. People of considerable Amerindian ancestry form the majority of the population in the northern, northeastern and center-western regions. Higher percents of blacks, mulattoes and triracials can be found in the eastern coast of the northeastern region from Bahia to Paraíba, and also in northern Maranao, southern Minas Gerais and in eastern Rio de Janeiro. From the 19th century, Brazil opened its borders to immigration. About 5 million people from over 60 countries migrated to Brazil between 1808 and 1972, most of them of Portuguese, Italian, Spanish, German, Ukrainian, Polish, Jewish, Russian, Chinese, Japanese, and Arab origin. Brazil has the second largest Jewish community in Latin America making up 0.06% of its population. Chapter 7 Section 2 – Religion Roman Catholicism is the country's predominant faith. Brazil has the world's largest Catholic population. According to the 2010 demographic census, 64.63% of the population followed Roman Catholicism, 22.2% Protestantism, 2.0% Cardicist Spiritism, 3.2% other religions, undeclared or undetermined, while 8.0% have no religion. Religion in Brazil was formed from the meeting of the Catholic Church with the religious traditions of enslaved African peoples and indigenous peoples. This confluence of faiths during the Portuguese colonization of Brazil led to the development of a diverse array of syncretistic practices within the overarching umbrella of Brazilian Catholic Church, characterized by traditional Portuguese festivities, religious pluralism increased during the 20th century, and the Protestant community has grown to include over 22% of the population. The most common Protestant denominations are evangelical Pentecostal ones. Other Protestant branches with a notable presence in the country include the Baptists, Seventh-day Adventists, Lutherans and the Reformed tradition. However, in the last ten years Protestantism, particularly in forms of Pentecostalism, and Evangelicalism, has spread in Brazil, while the proportion of Catholics has dropped significantly. After Protestantism, individuals professing no religion are also a significant group, exceeding 8% of the population as of the 2010 census. The cities of Boa Vista, Salvador, and Porto Velho have the greatest proportion of irreligious residents in Brazil. Teresina, Fortezela, and Florianópolis were the most Roman Catholic in the country. Greater Rio de Janeiro, not including the city proper, is the most irreligious and least Roman Catholic Brazilian periphery, while Greater Porto Alegre and Greater Fortezela are on the opposite sides of the lists, respectively. In October 2009, the Brazilian Senate approved and enacted by the President of Brazil in February 2010, an agreement with the Vatican, in which the legal statute of the Catholic Church in Brazil is recognized. The agreement confirmed norms that were normally complied with regarding religious education in public elementary schools, marriage and spiritual assistance in prisons and hospitals. The project was criticized by parliamentarians who understood the end of the secular state with the approval of the agreement. Chapter 7 Section 3 – Urbanization According to Ibiz urban areas already concentrate 84.35% of the population, while the southeast region remains the most populated one, with over 80 million inhabitants. The largest urban agglomerations in Brazil are Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, and Belo Horizonte, all in the southeastern region, with 21.1, 12.3, and 5.1 million inhabitants respectively. The majority of state capitals are the largest cities in their states, except for Vitoria, the capital of Espirito Santo, and Florianópolis, the capital of Santa Catarina. Chapter 7 Section 4, Language 
The official language of Brazil is Portuguese, which almost all of the population speaks and is virtually the only language used in newspapers, radio, television, and for business and administrative purposes. Brazil is the only Portuguese-speaking nation in the Americas, making the language an important part of Brazilian national identity and giving it a national culture distinct from those of its Spanish-speaking neighbors. Brazilian Portuguese has had its own development, mostly similar to 16th-century Central and Southern dialects of European Portuguese, with a few influences from the Amerindian and African languages, especially West African and Bantu restricted to the vocabulary only. As a result, the language is somewhat different, mostly in phonology, from the language of Portugal and other Portuguese-speaking countries. These differences are comparable to those between American and British English. In 1990, the community of Portuguese language countries, which included representatives from all countries with Portuguese as the official language, reached an agreement on the reform of the Portuguese orthography to unify the two standards then in use by Brazil on one side and the remaining Lusophone countries on the other. This spelling reform went into effect in Brazil on 1 January 2009. In Portugal, the reform was signed into law by the President on 21 July 2008 allowing for a six-year adaptation period, during which both orthographies will coexist. The remaining CPLP countries are free to establish their own transition timetables. The sign language law legally recognized in 2002, the use of the Brazilian Sign Language, more commonly known by its Portuguese acronym Libras, in education and government services. The language must be taught as a part of the education and speech and language pathology curricula. Libras teachers, instructors and translators are recognized professionals. Schools and health services must provide access to deaf people. Minority languages are spoken throughout the nation. 180 Amerindian languages are spoken in remote areas and a significant number of other languages are spoken by immigrants and their descendants. In the municipality of Sao Gabriel de Cachoeira, Niingatu, Baniwa and Tucano languages had been granted co-official status with Portuguese. There are significant communities of German and Italian origins in the southern and southeastern regions, whose ancestors' native languages were carried along to Brazil, and which, still alive there, are influenced by the Portuguese language. Tolian is officially a historic patrimony of Rio Grande do Sul, and two German dialects possess co-official status in a few municipalities. Italian is also recognized as ethnic language in the Santa Teresa microregion and Vila Vela, and is taught as mandatory second language at school. Learning at least one second language is mandatory for all the 12 grades of the mandatory education system. Brazil is the first country in South America to offer Esperanto to secondary students. Chapter 8 Culture The core culture of Brazil is derived from Portuguese culture, because of its strong colonial ties with the Portuguese Empire. Among other influences, the Portuguese introduced the Portuguese language, Roman Catholicism, and colonial architectural styles. The culture was, however, also strongly influenced by African, indigenous and non-Portuguese European cultures and traditions. Some aspects of Brazilian culture were influenced by the contributions of Italian, German and other European as well as Japanese, Jewish and Arab immigrants who arrived in large numbers in the south and southeast of Brazil during the 19th and 20th centuries. The indigenous Amerindians influenced Brazil's language and cuisine, and the Africans influenced language, cuisine, music, dance and religion. Brazilian art has developed since the 16th century into different styles that range from Baroque to Romanticism, Modernism, Expressionism, Cubism, Surrealism, and Abstractionism. Brazilian cinema dates back to the birth of the medium in the late 19th century, and has gained a new level of international acclaim since the 1960s. Chapter 8 Section 1 – Architecture the architecture of Brazil is influenced by Europe, especially Portugal. It has a history that goes back 500 years to the time when Pedro Cabral discovered Brazil in 1500. Portuguese colonial architecture was the first wave of architecture to go to Brazil. 
it is the basis for all Brazilian architecture of later centuries. In the 19th century during the time of the Empire of Brazil, Brazil followed European trends and adopted neoclassical and Gothic revival architecture. Then in, in the 20th century especially in Brasilia, Brazil experimented with modernist architecture. The colonial architecture of Brazil dates to the early 16th century when Brazil was first explored, conquered and settled by the Portuguese. The Portuguese built architecture familiar to them in Europe in their aim to colonize Brazil. They built Portuguese colonial architecture which included churches, civic architecture including houses and forts in Brazilian cities and the countryside. During 19th century Brazilian architecture saw the introduction of more European styles to Brazil such as neoclassical and Gothic revival architecture. This was usually mixed with Brazilian influences from their own heritage which produced a unique form of Brazilian architecture. In the 1950s the modernist architecture was introduced when Brasilia was built as new federal capital in the interior of Brazil to help develop the interior. The architect Oscar Niemeyer idealized and built government buildings, churches and civic buildings in the modernist style. Chapter 8 Section 2 Music The music of Brazil was formed mainly from the fusion of European and African elements. Until the 19th century, Portugal was the gateway to most of the influences that built Brazilian music, although many of these elements were not of Portuguese origin, but generally European. The first was José Mauricio Nunes Garcia, author of Sacred Pieces with Influence of Viennese Classicism. The major contribution of the African element was the rhythmic diversity in some dances and instruments that had a bigger role in the development of popular music and folk, flourishing especially in the 20th century. Popular music since the late 18th century began to show signs of forming a characteristically Brazilian sound, with samba considered the most typical and on the UNESCO cultural heritage list. Maracatu and Afoche are two Afro-Brazilian music traditions that have been popularized by their appearance in the annual Brazilian carnivals. The sport of capoeira is usually played with its own music referred to as capoeira music, which is usually considered to be a call-and-response type of folk music. Foro is a type of folk music prominent during the Festa Junina in northeastern Brazil. Jack A. Draper III, a professor of Portuguese at the University of Missouri, argues that foro is used as a way to subdue feelings of nostalgia for a rural lifestyle. Choro is a very popular music instrumental style. Its origins are in 19th century Rio de Janeiro. In spite of the name, the style often has a fast and happy rhythm, characterized by virtuosity, improvisation, subtle modulations and full of syncopation and counterpoint. Bossa Nova is also a well-known style of Brazilian music developed and popularized in the 1950s and 1960s. The phrase Bossa Nova means literally new trend. A lyrical fusion of samba and jazz, Bossa Nova acquired a large following starting in the 1960s. Chapter 8 Section 3 Literature. Brazilian literature dates back to the 16th century, to the writings of the first Portuguese explorers in Brazil, such as Pero Vaz de Caminha, filled with descriptions of fauna, flora, and commentary about the indigenous population that fascinated European readers. Brazil produced significant works in Romanticism, novelists like Joaquim Manuel de Macedo and Jose de Alenca wrote novels about love and pain. Alenca, in his long career, also treated indigenous people as heroes in the indigenous novels O Guarani, Iracema, and Ubirajara. Machado de Assis, one of his contemporaries, wrote in virtually all genres and continues to gain international prestige from critics worldwide. Brazilian modernism, evidenced by the week of modern art in 1922, was concerned with a nationalist avant garde literature, while postmodernism brought a generation of distinct poets like João Cabral de Melo Neto. Carlos Drummond de Andrade, Vinicius de Moraes, Cora Coralina, Graciliano Ramos, Cecilia Meirelles, and internationally known writers dealing with universal and regional subjects like Jorge Amado, João Guimarães Rosa, Clarice Lispector, and Manuel Bandera. Chapter 8 Section 4 Cuisine Brazilian cuisine varies greatly by region, 
reflecting the country's varying mix of indigenous and immigrant populations. This has created a national cuisine marked by the preservation of regional differences. Examples of feijoada, considered the country's national dish, and regional foods such as beiju, feijo trapero, vatapá, moqueca, polenta, and acarie. The national beverage is coffee and cachaça is Brazil's native liquor. Cachaça is distilled from sugar cane and is the main ingredient in the national cocktail, Caperinha. A typical meal consists mostly of rice and beans with beef, salad, French fries and a fried egg. Often, it is mixed with cassava flour. Fried potatoes, fried cassava, fried banana, fried meat and fried cheese are very often eaten in lunch and served in most typical restaurants. Popular snacks are pastel, coxina, powder queijo, pamela, esfera, kipe, empanada and empada, little salt pies filled with shrimps or heart of palm. Brazil has a variety of desserts such as brigadeiros, bolo de rolo, cacada, beijinhos and romeu e julieta. Peanuts are used to make pasoca, rapadura and pay de malek. Local common fruits like acai, cupuasu, mango, papaya, cocoa, cashew, guava, orange lime, passion fruit, pineapple, and hog plum are turned in juices and used to make chocolates, ice pops and ice cream. Chapter 8 Section 5, Cinema The Brazilian film industry began in the late 19th century, during the early days of the Belle Epoque. While there were national film productions during the early 20th century, American films such as Rio the Magnificent were made in Rio de Janeiro to promote tourism in the city. The films Limici and Gunga Bruta, the latter being produced by Adamar Gonzaga through the prolific studio Synodia, were poorly received at release and failed at the box office, but are acclaimed nowadays and placed among the finest Brazilian films of all time. The 1941 unfinished film It's All True was divided in four segments, two of which were filmed in Brazil and directed by Orson Welles, it was originally produced as part of the United States Good Neighbor Policy during Getulio Vargas' Estado Novo government. During the 1960s, the Cinema Novo movement rose to prominence with directors such as Glauber Rocha, Nelson Pereira dos Santos, Paulo César Saraceni, and Arnoldo Jaber. Rocha's films Deus e o Diabo na Terra do Sol and Terra em Trance are considered to be some of the greatest and most influential in Brazilian film history. During the 1990s, Brazil saw a surge of critical and commercial success with films such as O Quatrilho, O Que e Isso, Companheiro, and Central do Brasil, all of which were nominated for the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film the latter receiving a Best Actress nomination for Fernanda Montenegro. The 2002 crime film City of God, directed by Fernando Mireles, was critically acclaimed, scoring 90% on Rotten Tomatoes, being placed in Roger Ebert's Best Films of the Decade list and receiving four Academy Award nominations in 2004, including Best Director. Notable film festivals in Brazil include the Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro International Film Festivals and the Gramado Festival. Chapter 8 Section 6, Theatre The theatre in Brazil has its origins in the period of Jesuit expansion when theatre was used for the dissemination of Catholic doctrine in the 16th century. In the 17th and 18th centuries the first dramatists who appeared on the scene of European derivation was for court or private performances. During the 19th century, dramatic theatre gained importance and thickness, whose first representative was Luis Carlos Martins Pena, capable of describing contemporary reality. Always in this period the comedy of costume and comic production was imposed. Significant, also in the 19th century, was also the playwright Antonio Gonçalves Dias. There were also numerous operas and orchestras. The Brazilian conductor Antonio Carlos Gomes became internationally known with operas like Il Guarani. 
At the end of the 19th century orchestrated dramaturges became very popular and were accompanied with songs of famous artists like the conductress Chiquina Gonzaga. Already in the early 20th century there was the presence of theatres, entrepreneurs and actor companies, but paradoxically the quality of the product staggered, and only in 1940 the Brazilian theatre received a boost of renewal thanks to the action of Pascual Carlos Magno, and his students' theatre. The comedians group and the Italian actors Adolfo Selli, Ruggiero Jacobi, and Aldo Calvo, founders of the Teatro Brasileiro de Comedia. From the 1960s it was attended by a theatre dedicated to social and religious issues and to the flourishing of schools of dramatic art. The most prominent authors at this stage were Jorge Andrade and Ariano Suisuna. Chapter 8 Section 7 Visual Arts Brazilian painting emerged in the late 16th century, influenced by Baroque, Rococo, Neoclassicism, Romanticism, Realism, Modernism, Expressionism, Surrealism, Cubism and Abstrationism making it a major art style called Brazilian Academic Art. The Missão Artística Francesa arrived in Brazil in 1816 proposing the creation of an art academy modeled after the respected Académie des Beaux-Arts, with graduation courses both for artists and craftsmen for activities such as modeling, decorating, carpentry and others and bringing artists like Jean-Baptiste de Bretot upon the creation of the Imperial Academy of Fine Arts. New artistic movements spread across the country during the 19th century and later the event called Week of Modern Art broke definitely with academic tradition in 1922 and started a nationalist trend which was influenced by modernist arts. Among the best-known Brazilian painters are Ricardo do Pillar and Manuel da Costa da Taiji, Victor Mireles, Pedro Americo and Almeida Jr., Anita Molfatti, Ismail Neri, Lazar Segal, Emiliano de Cavalcanti, Vicente do Rego Monteiro, Antecila do Amaral, Aldo Bonadiai, José Panchetti and Candido Portinari. Chapter 8 Section 8 Sports the most popular sport in Brazil is football. The Brazilian men's national team is ranked among the best in the world according to the FIFA World Rankings, and has won the World Cup tournament a record five times. Volleyball, basketball, auto racing, and martial arts also attract large audiences. The Brazil men's national volleyball team, for example, currently holds the titles of the World League, World Grand Champions Cup. World Championship and the World Cup. In auto racing, three Brazilian drivers have won the Formula One World Championship eight times. Some sport variations have their origins in Brazil, beach football, futsal, and football emerged in Brazil as variations of football. In martial arts, Brazilians developed capoeira, veil tudo, and Brazilian jiu jitsu. Brazil has hosted several high profile international sporting events like the 1950 FIFA World Cup and recently has hosted the 2014 FIFA World Cup, 2019 Copa America, and 2021 Copa America. The Sao Paulo Circuit, Autodromo José Carlos Pace, hosts the annual Grand Prix of Brazil. Sao Paulo organized the fourth Pan American Games in 1963, and Rio de Janeiro hosted the 15th Pan American Games in 2007. On 2 October 2009, Rio de Janeiro was selected to host the 2016 Olympic Games and 2016 Paralympic Games, making it the first South American city to host the Games and second in Latin America, after Mexico City. Furthermore, the country hosted the Fiber Basketball World Cups in 1954 and 1963. At the 1963 event, the Brazil national basketball team won one of its two world championship titles.